Moving to problem number 26, which is from parabola. It is given the slope of the line touching both the parabolas, a problem related to common tangent, common tangent to both parabolas. One parabola is y square is equal to 4x and another is x square is equal to minus 32y. Now let us see the solution. There is a line which is common to both the parabolas that is a line a tangent to both the parabolas. Let this is one parabola and say this is another parabola. Now the first parabola y square is equal to 4x any line which touches this that is which is a tangent to this parabola can be written as y is equal to mx plus 1 by m. Now this line is a tangent to this given parabola it also touches the second parabola that is x square is equal to minus 32y. Now if I am going to solve this line with this parabola that is by substituting the value of y we can see here we will get a quadratic in x. This quadratic in x will have equal roots y equal roots because this line is touching this parabola so it won't be cutting this parabola at two distinct points like this it will be touching so these two roots will be equal it will be touching at a common point at a single point so the discriminant of this quadratic equation is bound to become 0. Now applying this concept 32m whole square minus 4ac is equal to 0. From here we will have m cube is equal to 1 by 8. So m is equal to 1 by 2. So this is the slope. So option number 4 we have. So the answer is the slope is equal to 1 by 2. Now we are moving to problem number 27. Next we are moving to problem number 27 which is related to mathematical reasoning. The statement negation of P if and only not Q that is again negation of Q is equivalent to negation of p if and only if q then again a tautology a fallacy or p if and only q. Now in this we have to form a truth table let us see we will be forming a truth table here. Here we will have p here we will have q the possibilities are true true, false, false, again q, it is true, false, then true and false. Now the negation of q, first we will be having negation of q, it is equal to false, then true, then again false, then again true. Now, we will be having this. Now, we know this will be false if one of these two is false. So, in this case, we will be getting false here. Again, in this case, we will be getting true here. In this case, we will be again getting true here. And in this case, we will be getting again false here. You can note here, again we have to apply one more negation here. Let us see. So the negation of this is true, false, false and true. It is very clear from here. 
all are not true so it is not a tautology all are not false so it is not a fallacy now we have to check this one and this one let us see this option now p and q if both are true here we will be getting true if one is false we say this is a false then again here false and true will be see this as false and again if both are false we will see this as true you can see here you are getting the same values from this two table so this is equivalent to the fourth one that is this now moving to problem number 28 Problem number 28, it is related to the differential equation. It is given the population of rabbits surviving at a time t is governed by the differential equation d of population, population is a function of time that is d of p t upon d t is equal to half p of t minus 200 and at time t equal to 0, the population is equal to 100 then p t equals to what? Now, we have to find out the population as a function of time. So, let us see a very simple differential equation is given to us. d of p t upon d t is equal to half p of t minus 200. Now, if we take these terms and the denominator, this is what we have integrating on both the sides log of p of t minus 400 is equal to half of t plus constant c. Now, taking nt log here. This is equal to where k is a constant. So, the population as a function of time is given as this. Now, at t is equal to 0, initially the population is given it is equal to 100. So, from here we can find out the value of k which is equal to minus 300. Now, putting the value k equal to minus 300 in this equation, we can see the correct option is option number fourth. So, this is the correct option we have. Now, moving to problem number 29. Problem number 29 related to coordinate geometry circles. It is given a circle C with the center 1 comma 1 and radius 1 is touching externally another circle having center 0 comma y and passing through origin. This circle is passing through origin. This is another circle named as T. Now, we have to find out the radius of this circle. The radius of this circle is given to us and that is equal to 1 and we have to find out the radius of this circle. Now, let us see. Since the two circles are touching each other externally, so the distance between the centers D which is equal to sum of radii, the radii of this is 1 and what is the radius of the second circle? It is again equal to distance between these two points which is equal to mod of y. 
Now, squaring on both the sides, we have from here you can see if you open y with positive sign 4y is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 by 4. So, this is the required radius. The radius as we know it is equal to mod of y. There is no need to open with negative sign you won't be getting any value out of this. So, the radius of the second circle option number 3 that is 1 by 4 moving to problem number 30. Moving to the last problem, problem number 30, you can see this problem is again related to three dimensional geometry. The angle between the lines whose direction cosine satisfy the equation. The equation first is L plus M plus N is equal to 0 and the second equation is L square is equal to M square plus N square. We have to find out the angle between two lines. The direction cosines are related to two equations. That means by solving these two equations, you will be getting more than one solution set of the direction cosine. Let us see the solution here. The first equation is L plus M plus N is equal to 0 and the second is L square is equal to M square plus N square. We know L square plus M square plus N square is equal to 1. So, this can be written as 1 minus L square. Now, from this you have L is equal to plus minus 1 by root 2. So, now we have M square plus N square is equal to 1 by 2 from here and M plus N is equal to plus minus 1 by root 2. Now, again if you square this out m square plus n square plus 2 m n is equal to 1 by 2 and by putting this value you will have m plus m into n is equal to 0. So, either m is 0 or n is 0. Now, if m is 0 and L we are taking these two values corresponding to this by using this relation you will be having n equal to minus plus 1 by root 2. So, the two sets we are getting from here that is 1 by root 2 comma 0 comma minus 1 by root 2 and another set is minus 1 by root 2. 0 and 1 by root 2. But if you want to find out the angle between these two lines, you will be getting an obtuse angle. Just check it out. Now, one more thing we have. The second case, this was case 1 when m is equal to 0. Now, the case 2 is when n is equal to 0. When n is 0, again by using this equation, you will be having m equal to minus plus 1 by root 2 as we know the value of L. So, two more sets we will be having. Another set is 1 by root 2 then minus 1 by root 2 and 0 and this is one more set we are having. Again, you can see there are four sets of L, M and N and if we want to calculate the angle, we can take any two set, but we have to make sure that the angle because in the question it has been asked about an acute angle, all the options are related to acute angle. So, if you take this set and this set cos of theta will be 1 by 2. So, the angle between the lines is coming out to be pi by 3. So, this is the required solution that is the angle between 
two lines. Thank you students.